Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be going through my April favourites and one product that's not really a fail but it's not quite what I thought it was going to be. So let's start off with some makeup and this is the Dior Summer Collection for 2023. There were two quints that came out in this collection as well as some other products as well. And the quince were, one was Eden Rock with the beautiful blue shade in, and also the other one, Rivage. Now, when I first got these quince, I tried the one Rivage, and I did think it sort of emphasised the texture a bit on my mature eyelids, although I played with it round a couple more times, and as long as you don't keep layering it and layering the shades, it stops them from emphasizing the texture. It's because in these quints there isn't a matte shade, they're all satins and it's just if you keep layering them. But out of the two quints between Rivage and Eden Rock, I do prefer the Eden Rock. I think the blue shade in this is really really beautiful and this is the one that I've got in front of me today. And I'm also wearing this on my eyes as well. So the shades that I'm using out of this quint today is this shade here, this beautiful blue. It has a little bit of grey in it as well. And this shade here. So I don't think you necessarily need to get both of the quints. I think with this one, you can use this really gorgeous blue if you want to. I've also used it on my lower lash line as well. Or if you don't want to use blue, then you've got these beautiful browns as well and this lovely peach color. So you can always just use these if you want to and stay away from the blue. I happen to love this, I, the shade here. I think it is absolutely gorgeous and I just think it is a really beautiful color story. The embossing that was on it, well it's still there a little bit, but I have used this quite a few times now, so it's sort of fading away, but a really, really gorgeous quint. Another Dior product that I recently picked up, and this is the J'adore, this is the body cream. They've got two other products as well. One is like a body shimmer, and the other one is a body scrub. I decided to pick up the cream. This is beautiful. If you love that J'adore scent, that's the one that doesn't have any alcohol in it, I have that one, and I think it's lovely, then you're going to really like this body cream. I'll open it up and show you the texture of it. It does appear quite thick since it is a body cream, but this, once you put it on, I'll take out a little bit and I will rub it into my hand. I'll just pull my sleeve up a bit, so I'll just put a little bit there. And once you start rubbing it in, it doesn't feel thick at all. And once it is absorbed, and it doesn't take long to absorb into your skin, you really can't feel, with some moisturizers, sometimes there's an oily layer or you can feel the moisturizer on, you can't with this. And the scent is just gorgeous. And I love the finish on it when it's fully absorbed. It makes your skin look beautifully, beautifully hydrated. And now it just feels silky smooth and you can't feel that layer of moisturizer that sometimes you get with other moisturizers that I've used. I just think it's a really beautiful formula and has a gorgeous scent. In my March favorites video, I mentioned the Galan Luminizer, that's the powder one, which I absolutely love. And towards the end of that month, I had just tried the limited edition by Terry had just released their liquid luminizer. This is the one here, and I didn't put it in that video. I wanted to wait for this month. I am wearing this today. This is beautiful. If you love a liquid type of product, you are going to love this. I'm wearing it today. I've just put it just on my cheekbones. I've also used this in other videos and put it underneath blush or you can put it all over the top. It's also a product that you can put down your nose, which I hardly ever do with a luminizer, but with this one, it is just so subtle and looks so beautiful on the skin that I do put it down here. I haven't today, and other times I've popped it up here as well. This is also a product you could put under your foundation, all over your face if you wanted to. 
The other thing I love about this as well is that if you are a little bit heavy handed with it and a little bit too much product comes out, it doesn't matter. It still just gives this beautiful luminosity without looking just too much. I think it is fantastic for mature skin and just a beautiful product. So they bought out two liquid blushes last year that were in similar type of packaging. So it just has the pull off cap. It has a brush on the end and you just click it here to dispense the product. You can use the brush to dispense the product. What I tend to do is just click it here, get the product out and with my finger I take it from the brush and then just tap it over the skin. But either way you use it, it is just such a lovely, lovely product and it doesn't disturb any product underneath. So underneath the luminizer here, I've got on a Chanel liquid blush and then pop this over the top and it hasn't disturbed the blush at all. Just a really beautiful, elegant product. Tom Ford released the three new quads. They were Hazy Sensuality, Peach Dawn, and the other one is Golden Hour. At this stage, I've only had the chance to review on video the Hazy Sensuality, but I have tried the other two as well. The other two at least two or three times, and I really love all of the quads. This one, Hazy Sensuality, is absolutely beautiful. It has this very unique pink shade in here so this is the cooler out of the three quads and it is really beautiful it's the classic wet and dry formula i love using these dry but if you want a bit more punch out of the color then you can wet them or wet the brush that you're using and you certainly get an intensity of the shade i love peach dawn and like i say in the golden hour as well they're completely different color stories the other ones are a lot warmer out of the two other quads possibly peach dawn is the one where the shades they sort of can meld together a bit but when I have a quad like that I just tend to use maybe two of the shades at a time. Out of the three quads this is probably the one that I would use the most. This is more of an everyday colour story for me. Now these have popped up and then gone away again. I understand that Nordstrom should be getting them fairly soon. Selfridges have them, they come in and out of stock. Harrods has had them as well. And these are supposed to be part of the permanent collection. But there are also some rumors floating around on Instagram that these may be vaulted as well. So maybe put aside for a couple of years and then brought out again. I'm not too sure what's going on. But hopefully these will be released at Nordstrom soon. And when they are, I will let you know on my community posts and also on my Instagram stories as well. Next is the Tom Ford. And I have to read it because it is a long name. It is the Liquid Lip Luxe Matte Lipsticks. And I am wearing one of these today. And this is in the shade Naked Haze. I also picked up two other colors as well. One's more of a plum color and the other one is a blue red and I will use them in future videos. I have used this in one of my previous videos. I'm wearing this today. And over the top, I'm wearing the Dior Lip Maximizer. This is a beautiful matte lipstick. I think it just goes on beautifully. It feels like you have nothing on your lips. I don't feel like they're too drying. Now, I have oily skin. I don't have dry skin. And so I never suffer from dry lips either. So if you do have dry lips, I can't say how this would work for you. But on me, I think this is a really beautiful formula. And I love it. This is how I've been wearing it over the last week when I've been going out quite a bit. So I pop this on first, let this dry down, which takes about two or three minutes. And then I've been popping just a nude type shade of lip maximizer over the top. So I get a little bit of the gloss, but when the gloss wears off, and this does quite easily, then I still have this beautiful shade underneath. And because it's a matte and it stains, then a lipstick lasts nearly all day for me. Now, before I did this video, I also filmed another video. So then I had a break, I had a cup of coffee, and then I had something to eat. 
the lipstick underneath the Tom Ford one didn't budge at all. I did have to reapply the gloss, but not the Tom Ford lipstick underneath. It really does stay on for quite a few hours. And even though it does eventually wear, you do have this really gorgeous stain left. So it does last quite a long time. And for some reason with me, lipsticks, whether they're mattes or whatever formula I use, they do tend to wear off, it seems more quickly than for other people. But with these, I do find that they have been lasting me a good six to eight hours. By the time it gets to the six, eight hour mark, it has faded. But like I was saying, it does leave a really beautiful stain. And I think the formula is gorgeous, very comfortable on the lips. And as I was saying, it just feels like you're not wearing anything on your lips at all. Very light formula. And the next product isn't really a fail. It's just not what I thought it was going to do. And this is the new MAC Studio Fix. It's called the Pro Set and Blur. And I got this in the shade. I think this is medium and the shade is really good for me. I do think this is a lovely powder. What I was hoping it was going to do is be slightly mattifying and it's not like that. The Chanel Natural Finish Loose Powder that I use a lot in my videos that is more of a mattifying powder with my oily skin. And I was hoping this was going to be the same, but it doesn't have that same effect as the Chanel one that I use. It is finely milled and it does give a beautiful finish to the skin. It's just that it didn't have that mattifying effect like I thought it was going to do. And I tested it for about two or three different days because over the last week or two I've had to go out and I've had quite long hours and I wanted to give this a trial run and see how it went but it just doesn't have that same effect as I was saying as the Chanel Natural Finish Loose Powder. What I do like about this is the packaging on this. So it just has the screw off lid and it has a little puff inside and I have, when I was trialing this out, I did use the puff and I used the rolling technique like they tell you to use. But what I like about this is that it is very tidy packaging. Loose powders can be quite messy. So it has this plastic lid inside that the little puff sits in. And then you just lift it up and there is the powder inside and it has a fine mesh over the top. And then you just grab the puff or the brush, whatever you're going to use, and just dab it in. And it just picks up the product like that. And I'll put some on now. And it does look really lovely once I've put it on. It is a lovely powder, but it just doesn't mattify like I thought it was going to. And when I say that I want a mattifying powder, I'm not talking about something that gives you a flat matte because even though I have oily skin, I just don't like that flat matte look. I don't think that that's very flattering, especially with mature skin. I was just hoping it had that same sort of soft matte finish that that Chanel Natural Loose Powder has and this just doesn't have it. So I'm not saying I'm going to throw it out or send it back or anything like that. It's just not one that I would repurchase. I have other powders that give this type of finish and I would say that they're probably better than this, such as the Sicily one that I've got and I've also got the La Prairie one as well. And both of those I would say are probably better than this. But if you are a fan of MAC makeup and you're looking for a powder that does give a lovely blurring effect, then this powder will do the job. It's just that if you have oily skin and you want something that slightly mattifies your skin, this powder isn't going to do that for you. So a couple of weeks ago when I was in the shopping mall in Hamilton, I popped into the L'Occitane shop and had a look at their different products and they do have really beautiful stores and I hadn't used one of their shower gels before. So I picked up the bath and shower gel. This is the 
cherry blossom and there is a lot of product in here it is 500 mils which is 16.9 fluid ounces and I've been using this since the day I got it and I absolutely love it not only do I love the scent of this cherry blossom I think it's really beautiful and it also has really lovely packaging as well I really love the formula of this so I use about three or four pumps for all over and it foams up beautifully but it also has this really gorgeous it's not only foaming but really creamy as well so it's not drying and once you've stepped out of the shower and dried yourself your skin feels really beautifully moisturized this is a really lovely product and as I was saying, you get a lot for your money. And once I've used this up, I'm going to try it in some of their other fragrances that they have as well. It is really, really lovely. And the last product I've actually had for quite a while, and I keep forgetting to mention it in one of these videos. And now I've got three of them. And this is the packaging that one of them came in. And this is the Diptyque. This is their room sprays. And this is the one 34 Boulevard Saint Germain. I think this might have been a limited edition one and it came in this pouch. But this is what they normally come in. It is packaging like this. This one here is more of a fresh citrus scent. This also is a really beautiful scent as well. And the other one I've got, it is that wood smoky type of scent and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So what I do is, not every day, but when I remember, I do one or two sprays in the lounge or in the bedroom and it lingers for a really long time. They also have really good throw. So you might put it in one room, but you can smell it in other places in the house as well. And another place where I use this, and it was the first time that I did this, is the other day I cleaned out my car, I gave it a really good vacuum, and clean the inside as well and then I finished it off with a couple of sprays of this now a couple of sprays was probably too much <laughs> the smell is still there days later although it's beautiful it's a little bit overwhelming in the small space inside your car but I will use it again it's just that next time I'll just use one spray but in saying that it is really really beautiful and I prefer if you want to scent your car or to make it smell really fresh I'd rather use something like this then you can get little diffusers of different brands have them and put them in your car but I don't like sticking things on the dashboard of my car or anything like that I just prefer to you just do one spray of this and you have that smell that lasts for days and days such beautiful products and I haven't really seen anyone else mentioning them before and I think I picked them up it was about three or four months ago and I wasn't too sure how they were going to perform but as I was saying in the house just one or two sprays in a room you can smell it in other places in the house as well I just think they're absolutely gorgeous and those were my favorite products for April and one product that didn't quite live up to my expectations let me know in the comments below what were your favorite products for the month of April as you might have tried something that I haven't tried yet and I could be tempted to pick it up. So that's it for today's video. I'd love it if you gave it a like and subscribed and I will see you next time. Bye.